Welcome back to another rebuild I have for you guys here on Madden 19. Today it is going to be a realistic rebuild of the Baltimore Ravens. Before I get into this one, as always, the links to my Discord, Twitter, and second channel are in the description if you want to click on any of those links. But let's get started, let's hop into the team overview. Lamar Jackson will be the starting quarterback for us, likely the entire rebuild, because he develops pretty well, he plays well in the game. His stats are also kind of absurd. He has 94 throw power and 94 speed. 95 acceleration and agility as well. He's just a freak athlete. He's so much fun to use in the game. Mark Ingram will be the starting running back for this first season, but he should regress pretty heavily. Uh, he's not a bad running back by any means, but I don't think he's the long-term answer. Maybe in real life, I don't know. He's been pretty solid for the Saints these past couple years, but in the game, he's definitely going to regress soon. I might try to draft a running back. I should be in a position to draft a pretty solid one. The wide receiver core isn't their greatest, but Hollywood Brown, Marquise Brown, whatever you want to call him, he should develop really well. I gave him quick development. I think that's pretty fair. He was a first round draft pick. I think he deserves to have at least quick here. 95 speed, 84 catching. He develops really well in this game, though I've seen him go off on multiple occasions. Willie Sneed isn't too bad. I wouldn't mind having him as a number three one day, but I do want still a dominant number one wide receiver at some point. Uh, the offensive line, pretty talented. Ronnie Stanley had a good season this past year, starting at left end. Alex Lewis, Matt Skira, left guard and center. Marshall Yanda, probably the best out of all of these guys at right guard. And then Orlando Brown, outright tackle. So definitely not too bad. And I don't think that's Orlando Brown. I forgot exactly what he looks like, but I'm pretty certain that's not him. Mark Andrews will be the starting tight end. He has quick development. He's a rookie. He's actually a really good receiving option for this team. He's fast. He's elusive. You know, he can catch the ball pretty well. I liked watching him, you know, on the field. I think he's going to have a pretty good season this next year. On the defensive side here, it's hard to tell if this team got worse or if it got better because, I mean, they did get Earl Thomas, so they improved their secondary, but they did lose... Zadarius Smith and Terrell Suggs. So, I mean, their pass rush is a little bit depleted, but Matthew Judon's pretty good in the game and in real life. He's not too bad, but he actually has pretty good zone coverage as well. Not the best block shedding. He's actually sort of more of like a 4-3 kind. I don't even know if I could say that. He can play both. He's a, he's a pretty versatile outside linebacker here. He can play like stand up. He can play rush. He's not too bad at that, at least in the game. Uh, you know, he can do both of those pretty well. We got Patrick on so or something like that. That's how you pronounce it. I always thought it was Onwowser for the longest time, and just before I started making this video, I wanted to make sure that's how it's pronounced. It was pronounced like Onwowso, so I looked up a video of him saying his name, and it turns out it's like Onwowso. On, I'm probably still mispronouncing it, but it's not Onwowser. I know that much. And then we have uh, Kenny Young. All right, he's a rookie. Maybe he can do something. And then Christopher Herndon, our starting right outside linebacker. Now, it's Jalen Ferguson, apparently. Yeah, they're just using Christopher Herndon's face. Hopefully, he can do something here. They do have Pernell McPhee. Uh, McPhee will, I don't even know if he's going to start in real life. He's 29 years old, 78 overall, not that great anymore. I don't want him starting on this team. They have a lot of depth here though. Tim Williams, Shane Ray, Tyus Bowser, all very young. I'm just going to go with Ferguson, our right outside linebacker though, just because he's a rookie. Honestly, no other reason than that. Jimmy Smith is a talented, you know, cornerback, but uh, Marlon Humphrey, probably the best corner on this team. He's a beast. He develops really well in the game. He's also just good in real life. And then we got Tavon Young. I'm going to have him play the nickel over Brandon Carr because he's like 80. Uh, no, he's 32, okay, but he's still pretty old. I don't really want him on this team for the long term. Then we got Tony Jefferson up here at strong safety, a pretty decent box safety, if you ask me. Uh, 76 tackling, that's all right for a strong safety. He's pretty slow, but he should be able to get the job done in simulation, 85 hit power on him as well. So the team's pretty talented, 81, but, um, you know, 83 offense and defense. I'd say the defense is better, but still, I mean, I guess they're even. And then here's specialist. Pretty much what you'd expect. I actually have Marquise Brown playing the slot wide receiver. Willie Sneed maybe should be there, but Marquise Brown will probably get a lot more experience points if he's the one playing there. So I will see you at the mid-season mark of this team. I don't really know what to expect. I'm kind of expecting like an 8-8, eight 9-7 and eight, nine and seven sort of season here, but I can also see them making the playoffs. I honestly have no idea. The team is 7-1 and one right now? Okay. All right, 2-5 and five for the Steelers. They're not playing well. The Bengals are 5-3, and three, as are the Browns, but I really can't believe... We are 7-1. I wonder who we lost to. Let's check out these experience points. Lamar Jackson only has one. Okay, so no one on the offense has more than that. So maybe the defense is just holding us into these games. I don't know. Michael Pierce has two. Um, all the cornerbacks have one. Matthew Judon over there also has one. Okay, well, Michael Pierce is the top free agent. I definitely want him back. He's a very good defensive tackle. Brandon Carr, I don't want back. I think the cornerback depth is all right on this team already. Nick Boyle, I don't really want back either. I just have a lot of tight ends on this team. No need for him again. Patrick, Owen was so. I want him back on the team. Matt Skira, I'll probably give a contract to. 
and then everybody else I don't really care about. So both uh, Onwaso and Skira liked the bonus and the duration, just not the salary, so you know, I can try to renegotiate with them later. But we did get back uh, Michael Pierce, who was far more important. We ended up making the playoffs here going 10 and 6, so the second half of the year was not as successful as the first half. But let me check out the stats quickly. Uh, the Browns went 10 and 6, Bengals 8 and 8, Steelers also 8 and 8. I like going over the stats first, just so I don't see who wins MVP, you know. Lamar Jackson, 3,871 yards, 31 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. That's a solid season. I would like more yards, but that's actually okay. Mark Ingram ran the ball very well. 1,249 yards, 8 total touchdowns. Okay. Kenneth Dixon, 7 touchdowns for him. Not too bad as a backup. I still want to replace Mark Ingram just because he is going to regress. And I'm just, I don't want that day to come. I'd rather have a running back who has uh, a lot of potential to improve. Willie Sneed did very well, actually. 82 catches, over 1,100 yards with nine touchdowns. Marquise Brown, 10 receiving touchdowns, 869 yards. Mark Andrews, not too bad. 616 total yards for him. Sack numbers, very good actually. This offensive line, run blocking and pass blocking pretty well. 110 tackles from Owen Wiseau. We have 11 total tackles for loss for Christopher Herndon. No, I'm going to keep making that joke, I think, this entire time. Jalen Ferguson got 11 tackles for loss. 10 from Michael Pierce. We have 13 and a half sacks there from Matthew Judon. That's actually very good. Six interceptions from Jimmy Smith. Okay. Two from Tony Jefferson and Tavon Young. One from Matthew Judon, Marlon Humphrey, Earl Thomas, and Brandon Carr. Any defensive touchdowns here? We do not have any safeties. None, I don't think. Yeah, okay. And then blocked kicks. We have one from Chris Warmly. All right. So 13th on offense. Not too bad. Can still improve that for sure, though. Defense was 10th. All right. So I like to see there. Todd Gurley wins MVP. Interesting. Anybody from the Ravens? I don't see anyone. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Actually, before I go fully through that, Joe Flacco was in the MVP running. That's pretty funny. Anybody on the Ravens here, though? Lamar Jackson at number 9, not too bad. Any rookies above him? Yes, Josh Allen and Baker Mayfield are both above him. That sucks a little bit. He probably didn't win Offensive Rookie of the Year then. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Preston Brown. Patrick Owen was so at number 2. Matthew Judon at number 4. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Baker Mayfield. Lamar Jackson at number 3. Marquise Brown, though, at number 7. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Tremaine Edmonds wins that one. Anybody from the Ravens? I'm not seeing anyone. All right, so... How many experience points do we have for Lamar Jackson? He does fit the scheme, and he had a pretty good season. Give me, like, three. Okay, he has two. He's still going to be the starting, you know, quarterback for sure. Two for Marquise Brown, two for Willie Sneed. Ronnie Stanley has three over there. Then defensively, we have three for Michael Pierce, one for a bunch of other players, three for Matthew Judon, two for Marlon Humphrey, and Tavon Young. Not too bad. Now, I will uh, check out the schedule, show you guys I didn't cheat or anything like that. Team schedule here, two and two in the preseason. Won the opening game against the Bills. Kind of got destroyed there by the Bengals. Won a whole ton in a row. Lost to the Steelers, won three in a row, then lost the final four games. Hold on a second. Do we have four games in a row, three games in a row, 20 to 23? No, we had two. Two straight games, 20 to 23. That's just kind of odd. But that's not a good way to end a season, especially heading into the playoffs. The team heading in uh, to the wild card round here is an 84 overall. The most improved on the offense, I think, is Ronnie Stanley. He's up to an 89. Not too bad. And then defensively, Matthew Judon up to an 86 with some confidence. Defense looking really nice on this team. Is it actually higher than the offense? It is now. Okay, so we have to take on the Chargers. They are ridiculous in the game, so I don't expect to win this game at all, even though we have a higher overall. They have so many players who just go off. Let's advance the week. Can we take down the Chargers? We can, actually. 28-17. to 17. Okay, now we have to go against the Patriots. They're an 85 overall team. Let's advance the week and go into the conference championship. This is actually pretty similar to what happened in real life. Didn't the Chargers and the Ravens play in the wild card round? I think the Chargers won, right? Or is that... Am I thinking of something else? I want to look this up to see if I'm right. Yeah, that's actually really similar. So, the Chargers and the Ravens did play. And the Chargers won 23-17. And we won 28-17. That's kind of funny. Then the winner went on to take on the Patriots. Okay. Anyway. We'll see if we can win this game. What was their overall? Okay, 85-84. I think I already checked that out. I just forgot because... A little bit distracted. But here we go. It's advanced the week. Can we take down Thomas Brady? Probably not, though. And we cannot. 35 to 28. Let's check out those games a little bit more in depth. I'm just going to show you the score here just to, you know, show you guys I didn't cheat or anything. I went into the entire playoffs here, but there we go. There's the, uh, the Ravens and Patriots. We lost no force wins. And then we also just won against the Chargers. No force wins either. The Browns and the Eagles make it to the Super Bowl. Let's advance the week. My money's on the Browns. And the Eagles are actually going to win here. All right. I still have to, you know, bring back a couple players like 
Patrick Onwaso and Matt Skira. So let me get on that. So they like the bonus and um, this, the, wait, what was it? The duration? I like the bonus and the duration, just not the salary. Okay, so let me just move this up like two. He's coming back to the team. All right, I'll do the same thing with Skira. He's a solid center. And there we go. We should get them both back. Okay, nice. Now let's go into free agency. I guarantee the top player is going to be Jay Ajayi. Who knows? Maybe someone random is here who isn't typically here. $58.06 million to probably not bring in anyone. Jay Ajayi is the top guy. Muhammad Wilkerson, Corey Legit. Pretty typical. I don't want anybody here. We have the 26th pick in this year's draft. The Jaguars start out with the number one pick. They are going with Grant Delpit out of LSU. The Giants take Tua. That usually happens when the Giants have a top five pick. Dolphins going with CJ Henderson. The Bills go with Trey Smith. And the Jets go with Derek Brown. Okay. I really want Jerry Judy on this team, but I don't think I can trade up and kind of keep it realistic. It's difficult to trade up in the draft and try to keep it realistic because there's a lot of stuff that goes on with those trades. So I am just going to sim to my pick. I'm not going to be able to get Jerry Judy, but I do have LaVishka Chenault on my draft board and everything. So maybe, maybe I can take Chenault if he's still available. He is still available and I want another wide receiver on this team. Who else could I go with right now though? I want a running back, right? So I kind of want DeAndre Swift. I know he's solid in this game. And he also fits the scheme, but so does J.K. Dobbins and Jonathan Taylor. And I feel like one of them will be available. So does Cam Akers. I know Cam Akers is also pretty good. So I'm not going to worry about that as much. Chenault will likely be the draft pick here. Let's just go with it. Lavishka Chenault out of Colorado. Welcome to the team. 79 overall. Quick development. He is going to be the number one wide receiver on this team. I'm going to have Hollywood Brown play the number two in the slot most likely. And then Willie Sneed, even though he did have 1,100 yards, will slide down to the number three. I think that's the best bet for the team in the long run. I think I actually am going to have to make a trade. I just need a second round draft pick. Because the next draft pick I have is in the third round. So let me try to trade up. Let's just go with the Bengals. Actually, no, they're a divisional team. Let's not do that. Let's go with the team not in the division and one with not that high, like, that doesn't have that high of a second round draft pick. Buccaneers. This is like, what, the 13th, 12th, what did it say, 45th, right? Yeah, so that's like the 13th pick in the second round. I think we can get away with doing this. Maybe throw him a defensive tackle, like Chris Wormley. You actually don't want Chris Wormley. All right. Um, a running back. They actually do need a running back on this team. I'm kind of like Kenneth Dixon as a backup, to be honest. Mark Ingram, I will keep... Okay, well, hold on. I think Mark Ingram will probably slide in to be my backup. So maybe then I could trade Kenneth Dixon. I'm going to throw them... I'm going to throw them Kenneth Dixon. And I'm also going to throw them... Probably a draft pick. Let's throw them Kenneth Dixon and... A... Ooh, I can probably give him my third... Now, let's give them a next year's second. Kenneth Dixon and a next year's second for their second this year. There we go. Got that one to go through. I don't think that's terribly unrealistic. I'm sorry if you Ravens fans really like Kenneth Dixon, but uh, he's not really needed right now, I guess, in the game. So now, in the second round, if DeAndre Swift is available, I'm going to take him. Let's see what kind of running backs are here. Jonathan Taylor is still the top running back. I just drafted him, but he didn't get any starting time. But then the only thing is that Cam Akers, I'm pretty sure Cam Akers is actually a higher overall. And I think he has star development. That's kind of bad that I know all this. Who else is still here, though? This is pretty important. I don't think I'd be able to get Cam Akers if I waited. Okay, so I'm going to use the fact that I kind of know what he's all about. And the fact that I already just drafted him. Like, drafted Jonathan Taylor, I mean. Um, I'm going to use that logic here just to go with Cam Akers instead. Akers is an 80 overall and he has star dev. So he's going to come and be the starting running back for this team. 87 speed, 77 trucking. Pretty versatile. He seems to be able to do like everything a running back should do. He can truck, run pretty hard. Not the greatest speed, but he has good agility and good catching. Josiah Scott actually looks kind of nice at cornerback. I don't think he'd really start much though, so I probably shouldn't go after him. I'm still going to. Nobody I pick right now is going to start. So there we go. Josiah Scott. 75 overall for him. 94 speed, 91 acceleration, 90 agility. Okay, this guy's actually not too bad. Is there elusiveness on here? Because maybe he can be a kick returner. I'm still good with the draft pick. I mean, he's good depth. I'm going to go with this Griffin Wood guy at defensive tackle just to see what he can do. He's just going to be a backup. So he's really not going to start or anything. But he's a 75 and he has star development. Oh, this is interesting. Because if he can start at defensive end... Maybe I should start him over Willie Henry. I don't think I will, but 
is actually pretty good. It's good to know for future rebuilds that uh, there's a decent defensive tackle pretty late. I may trade this pick away since I traded away a second round draft pick next year already. So let me try this. What can we get? A fourth next year? Honestly, I think that's worth it. So it's from the Panthers or the Seahawks. I think the Panthers will do worse. So I'll go with them. With this pick here, I'm going to see if the center is still available. I doubt he is, but I'll take a shot on him if he is still here. He is Carson Strickland. 66 overall. He had a good combine, but really bad stats. I am sorry that I ended up trading in that draft. I really don't like trading that much in realistic rebuilds just because it, it is difficult to gauge whether or not it is realistic, but I absolutely needed to in this case just to get a good running back. I don't think Mark Ingram would have played well again. I do think Cam Akers... I don't even know if Cam Akers is going to play well, but he definitely has a lot of potential here. Let's check out the rest of the NFL. I actually drafted that entire time. I usually don't do that, so I took every one of these players. Um, we actually had a pretty solid draft. We got LaVishka Chenault. We got Cam Akers. I am good with both of those guys. Now, after the fifth pick, who went? When did um, Jerry Judy go? So Jerry Judy went to the Packers. That's always what happens. I feel like this happens all the time. Uh, then Marvin Wilson... Raekwon Davis, Jalen Thompson, Andrew Thomas, Walker Little. Walker Little usually doesn't make it out of the top 10, so that's interesting. Raekwon Davis to the to the Seahawks is cool. They should probably slide him inside, unless they switch to a 3-4. I don't know. But anyway, pretty good draft for us. Um, I'm excited to see what these young players can do. This will be the team for the second season. I think it's pretty good. I think it upgraded a little bit. We're now in 83 overall. We gave Lamar Jackson a couple more options here. Cam Akers, LaVishka Chenault are both solid rookies. Hopefully Akers can go off. He has star dev. I'm really banking on him to get like four or five experience points this year and just have a decent season. Just don't play too badly. I really hope you don't. The offensive line regressed a little bit, I guess, but Ronnie Stanley did go up in overall, so I think if you, like, take the average of everything, I'm pretty sure they did improve in general overall-wise. Mark Andrews went up in overall a little bit. And then defensively, Matthew Judon played really well last season. Hopefully he can do that again. We didn't really change much on this side of the ball. Really, I don't think anything changed based on starters and everything like that. The team is still pretty similar. The offense changed a little bit, though. Let's advance. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, have another solid year. I had a feeling this was going to happen. We are 1-6 now. I really wanted Cam Akers to do well on this team, but... Whenever I get a rookie running back, they don't play well. The last time I got one who played well was Najee Harris, and I feel like he's an exception because he had superstar development, but every other time I try to start a rookie running back, I have such a bad season. Maybe we can turn it around. Very doubtful, but the Browns are 7-1, and one, the Bengals 5-2, and two, Steelers 2-5. Two and five. Cam Akers has two experience points, so maybe there's a future with him. He also could totally not be the issue. I don't know, but it, it typically works out that if you have like a, a rookie running back who's like an 80 overall or lower they just don't play well at least in my experience obviously i'll see what happens at the end of the year but marlon humphrey isn't confident maybe he's having a bad year i'm not entirely sure marshall yanda is here i do want him back he's sort of old but he's an 89 overall he's a very solid right guard ronnie stanley i want matthew judon i want jimmy smith i don't really want because he's going to regress even more orlando brown i would like back Tavon young patrick ricard willie sneed i'll probably give a contract to as well willie henry I think I'll bring back Willie Henry. He's not too bad. Actually, I think I'll let him go because I can probably bring him back in free agency if I really need him, but I want to see who else is there in free agency. Uh, Alex Lewis, honestly, same thing goes with him. I don't really want him all that badly. So we got back Willie Sneed, Patrick Ricard, Tavon Young, Orlando Brown, Matthew Judon, Ronnie Stanley, and Marshall Yanda. So I kind of actually hope we go like 1-15 in 15 just so we can get a really solid draft pick, but I will see you at the end of the season. I was also saving my coach experience, I guess I should mention this, to get the running back upgrade. I'm going to keep going with that. I'm not going to spend anything yet. So let's advance to like week 15 around there. If I don't have it by then, I'll spend it on a couple other things. We didn't make the playoffs this year. Not very shocking though. We did go 6-10. and 10. The Browns were 13-3. and 3. The Bengals 10-6. and 6. The Steelers 5-11. All right, how did the team perform? Well, Lamar Jackson over 4,000 yards, but 23 touchdowns to 14 picks is pretty horrible. Cam Akers, how did you do? Actually, all right. Okay, so I apologize for slamming Cam Akers before. He played well. 983 yards, 4.2 yards per carry, 6 touchdowns. That's definitely not bad. Hollywood Brown played very well. 94 catches, 1,154 yards, 8 touchdowns. Mark Andrews got 7 touchdowns. Lavishka Chenault, 800 yards, almost 5 touchdowns. Not too bad. Sack number is still very low. Okay, so the offensive line playing well. Patrick Owen was so 127 total tackles. Four of those for loss. Not too bad. 11 tackles for loss for Brandon Williams. 10 for Willie Henry. 
Not many sacks this year, but five and a half there for Matthew Judon, five and a half for Patrick Owen was so too. Four interceptions. That's all we got this season. Okay, the defense wasn't really anything special. Defensive touchdowns, we don't have any safeties. We have one, Willie Henry. Block kicks, none. Okay. So offense was 17th, went down a little bit. Maybe I should try to change the playbook or something. And then defense was 19th. Okay, that went down as well. Tom Brady wins MVP. Jake Fromm at number three. Anybody from the Ravens? Hold on, wait. Miles Garrett is up here? Miles Garrett's at number six. Hold on a second. What did he do? That he was at number six. Oh my god, I'm actually excited for this. Miles Garrett, what did you end up doing? 30 sacks? <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Miles Garrett got 30 sacks. 15 and a half from Olivier Vernon. That's like a phenomenal season on its own. But literally, he got like two times that. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to this. That makes sense. He, should, he would win MVP. Just saying. If that ever happened in real life, he would 1 million percent win MVP. It wouldn't even be close either. It shouldn't be close. If anybody ever gets that many sacks, that's a should be an MVP. But anyway, <laughs> AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. Oh my god. Defensive Player of the Year, obviously, is Miles Garrett. If anybody else won that, that's just stupid. Baron Browning, Olivier Vernon up there as well the browns are so good but patrick on at number eight isn't too bad offensive rookie of the year actually goes to cam Akers. all right lavishka chenault at number four defensive rookie of the year dylan moses wins that one nobody from the ravens all right well anyway cam Akers. did you get like six experience points that would be huge come on he got five all right i'll take five he's gonna be an 85 overall running back he can actually stay on the team marquise brown got four lavishka chenault got two okay those guys are developing we'll get there one day i promise Two for a few other guys as well. Defensively, nothing going around here. Three for Marlon Humphrey, but that's pretty much it. The Saints and the Browns are in the Super Bowl. Who's going to win it? I'm not going to try to take a guess here. It's going to go to the Browns, 28-21. to What a Super Bowl. So I don't think I want anybody, you know, who's still here right now. I will uh, consider bringing back Willie Henry at some point, maybe. Unless there's somebody better. I don't know. Alex Lewis, I, I just don't want anymore. He's 28 years old, only a 76 overall. Jimmy Smith also is down to a 79, so I don't really care too much about him. I could probably sign a corner in this class. Um, so who can I bring in? $54.78 million. Kareem Hunt likely highlights this entire class. There he is. Carson Wentz is here. Joe Tooney is here. Ooh, I would really like Joe Tooney. I think I might have to go all in on him, because we do have the money for it, and I feel like he'd be worth it. Colin Johnson? Why is Colin Johnson here too? He is star dev. Wow, he's actually pretty solid right now. Okay, so what kind of cornerbacks are here? Anthony Brown, the first guy. I always go after Anthony Brown. There's probably some like rookies down here. Yeah, Sean Bunting. Um, Julian Love is down here as well. Should I try to snag a corner in the draft? I can probably get Asante Samuel Jr. And if I can't... It's really not that big of a deal. Trading for one of the trade block, which I kind of allow myself to do in these rebuilds, is very easy because there's always pretty decent corners there. Even in free agency, there's probably a guy I can have at least for one season. Taylor Rapp is a free agent strong safety here. I don't need him. But let's go after at least one player. I think it is going to be Joe Tooney. Going to be a lot of money, but I think he is going to be worth it in the end. I did end up getting Joe Tooney. I just barely went over the Dolphins. I'm actually kind of surprised he accepted. Also, I got DJ Humphreys and Willie Henry. So, uh, Humphreys can probably play right guard. That's what I'm thinking, because Marshall Yanda did end up retiring. Okay, so let me make that switch. It's actually interesting. I want to point this out. He goes up and overall at guard. That's pretty cool. It usually doesn't happen. We have the 11th pick here, so just outside of the top 10. The Raiders, though, going with Tyson Campbell, number one overall. Foster Serrell goes number two overall. Micah Parsons, number three. Isaiah Wilson, number four, and the Jets round out the top five with Anoma. Yabi Anoma? I guess that's how it's pronounced. Let's advance to our pick. Who is here at number 11? So, there's very good players in this draft, obviously, but who do I really want? I just want to see something really quickly. Stanford Samuels is gone. Actually, no, he's right there. Ooh, I can get Stanford Samuels. I never get Stanford Samuels. Okay, the only other issue with this is that I need a middle linebacker really badly. I might just have to take a shot on one of those other guys there. I really want Stanford Samuels. I think he's actually going to be so good on this team. I'm making the move. Welcome to the team. 82 overall for him. 
Very nice coverage stats. 93 speed, 94 acceleration, 91 agility. He is a beast. And now we have to go to the third round because we do not have a second round draft pick here. With the third round pick we have here, I'm going to go with one of these outside linebackers. I know nothing about any of them. So I really don't know what to expect. I'm going to go with Adrian Jackson just because he's a pass coverage guy. He looks probably pretty fast then if he has good pass coverage. Here we go. 75. You're not actually that bad. 88 speed. I was pretty right with that assessment. 79 zone on him isn't too bad either. I doubt he can play inside, but I don't know. He's on the team. I'm just going to go to the end of the draft here. So after this Adrian Jackson dude was selected, the computer got us Crosby Mitchell, Parker Izzo, Parker Purcell, Purcell maybe, and then two players under a 70. So who else went in this draft, you know, into which teams? So number six was Trevor Lawrence. He actually went in the top 10. Okay, went to the Steelers. Rondell Moore went to the Jags. Also, again, Rondell Moore goes to Purdue, for any of you guys wondering. Cesar Ruiz went to the Broncos. Caden Stearns there. He always goes so highly. I don't know why. He's only a 76. Xavier Thomas going uh, to round out the top 10. I'm very happy we got Sanford Samuels the third. I've wanted to draft him for such a long time, and we finally were able to. The team here heading into this third season is an 86 overall. Definitely the best team we've had so far. The offense is looking really nice. We don't have anybody who's, like, amazing, like, truly amazing on this offense. I mean, Ronnie Stanley is the highest overall at a 90, but it is pretty balanced. There's, like, Bs across the board everywhere. Lamar Jackson, Cam Akers, both looking all right. Both still very young, too. Hopefully, they can still develop. Marquise Brown has star development now. 83 overall. Hopefully, he can go off. LaVishka Chenault, hopefully, is poised to have a good season here, too. The offensive line looking good. Mark Andrews at tight end looking nice. Defensively, the linebackers aren't that good, aside from Matthew Judon. I do want to replace one of these guys at some point, but I just have not found a way or, like, a reason to do so yet. I couldn't really draft any. There weren't many good ones in free agency, so I'm just going to let it slide with this for now. The secondary is still good. I think it got better. Sanford Samuels the third on this team now. Defensive line still pretty good. I'll probably have to upgrade Brandon Williams at some point. Uh, I'm not sure when I can do that. I actually want to see something, though. Griffin Wood. I want you to, like, get more playing time. I want to put you as, like, the number two rush defensive tackle. Because he went up to a 78. He got three experience points. You know, he's actually not too bad. So let me put you as the second rush defensive tackle. I just want to see what you can do. Maybe you can randomly get like 10 sacks or something. That would be pretty awesome. But I'll sim now. Hopefully we have a good record at the midseason. Okay, so we are 5-3 and three here. Doing much better than we were last year at this point. Uh, we are in second place. The Bengals 5-2. and two. Some kids are screaming outside. I swear. Always people outside. I apologize. This is always how it is. Uh, three and four for the Browns, three and four for the Steelers. We actually play the Browns next week, and we have a bye week, and then play them once more. All right, so, offense. Two experience points here for Cam Akers, two for LaVishka Chenault as well. Maybe he's having a good year. And then defensively, two for Stanford Samuels the third. I'm about it. Let's go. Earl Thomas needs a contract. He's probably going to regress even further. He's only a 90 overall now, but I still think he'll be good enough to stay on the team. Marlon Humphrey, I want. Tony Jefferson, I think I still want. Marquise Brown. Sam Cook. I'm going to give Sam Cook a contract. He's approaching 40, but it doesn't matter since he's a punter, really. Mark Ingram, I don't really want anymore. Seth Roberts, Tim Williams, um, Jalen Ferguson. I should probably bring one of these guys back, and I think it is going to be Ferguson. But then I still want to look to, to like get one in the offseason or in uh, the draft or something somehow. But I think those are all the guys I'm going to bring back. I'm sorry, Gus Edwards. I'm not going to bring you back to the team here. Earl Thomas, Marlon Humphrey, Tony Jefferson, Marquise Brown, Sam Cook, and Jalen Ferguson all come back to the team so we are poised to make a playoff run we aren't first in the division but hopefully we can finish first um, I still have some coach experience to spend so let me do that and I'll see you at the end of the year we made the playoffs here once again going 10 and 6 um, I signed a practice squad player that's just weird because usually <laughs> if you make the playoffs this little tab doesn't come up but whatever anyway the Browns also went 10 and 6 we both on the top of the division there the Bengals 9 and 7 Steelers 6 and 10 how did Lamar Jackson play this season? 4,427 yards, 30 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. I would like fewer interceptions for sure. He's averaging just about one per game, but still, the yards and touchdowns are both nice. Cam Akers was pretty good. Mark Ingram scored 10 touchdowns, though. Interesting. But Cam Akers, almost 1,100 yards, 7 touchdowns. Marquise Brown was dominant. 86 catches, 1,200 yards, exactly 10 touchdowns. Lavishka Chenault, 862 yards, 8 touchdowns. Mark Andrews, 822 yards. All good seasons there. 10 uh, sacks led up from Orlando Brown. Honestly, that's not horrible. 132 tackles there from Patrick on Lasso. 
We have 11 tackles for loss for Jalen Ferguson with 8 sacks for him. He had a good season. 10 for Michael Pierce as well. Jalen Ferguson led the team in sacks. Matthew Judon came in with 7. Two interceptions from Tavon Young and Earl Thomas. One from Jalen Ferguson, Patrick Onoso, and Marlon Humphrey. Defensive touchdowns. None. Safeties. We have one from Michael Pierce. And zero blocked kicks. Okay, so fifth this year on offense. Much better than the past few seasons. Defense was sixth. Okay, so the defense is also very good. Jared Goff wins MVP this year. Jake Fromm, though, at number three is a 95. Good lord. JT Daniels up there as well for the Dolphins. Okay. KJ Costello. All right. Lamar Jackson at number 10. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Give me a second. There we go. Lamar Jackson, number 6. Defensive Player of the Year. Patrick Owen was so going to win that one. All right. I'll take it. Offensive Rookie of the Year, JT Daniels. Trevor Lawrence, number 2. I guess he started for their team. I don't know. Nobody from the Ravens. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Stanford Samuels, the third at number 5. All right, so let's check out how many experience points we have for this team. We have three from Lamar Jackson and Cam Akers. Nine for Marquise Brown. <laughs> and you have Superstar. Wow. Wide receiver of the year, two Pro Bowls. Plus Superstar Dev for no reason. All right, LaVishka Chanel has three. The wide receiver core is finally coming along. Defensively, we have four for Stanford Samuels, two for a couple other guys. All right, this team has a pretty bright future right now. Two for Tavon Young as well. This wide receiver, or this cornerback core is going to be nasty. I also forgot to show you uh, the schedule. I feel like, did I show you it last year? I don't really remember. Whatever. Two and two in the preseason. Won the opening two games. Lost three in a row then. Won three more. Lost two more. Won two. Lost. Won the final three. That was actually a huge, you know, three-game win streak there. Now I can spend these experience points, and I'll let you know what the team's all about. All right, the team, after spending all of those experience points, is up to an 88 overall. Marquise Brown, man, is a 93 superstar development. 99 catching with his confidence boost. 96 speed, 97 short route running. He is an absolute glitch right now. Cam Maker's looking a lot better. He's an 88. Let's take a look at his stats a little bit here. Still has 87 speed, but nice running back stats. 92 carrying, 91 juke move, and spin move, 92 elusiveness. He's still a great running back for us. Uh, Lamar Jackson, 88 with confidence. Griffin Wood is going to slide to left end. So he's an 81 overall over here. That's exactly what Brandon Williams was. But Brandon Williams is an 84 defensive tackle. So I'm fine with this. This actually makes the team go up in overall, I think. I don't know, but whatever. He is, uh, and Brandon Williams is, you know, good as a backup defensive tackle. Griffin Wood will probably start here next year. I'm actually fine with it. He has star development. He's actually developing quite well. Stanford Samuels the third, up to an 86 overall. The team's looking nice. So we have to take on a divisional rival. The Cleveland Browns are disgusting in this game. They're an 89, we are an 88. I'm not really liking our chances in this one, but let's advance. Can we win? Probably not, but whatever. Baker Mayfield likely step all over us. And that's what's going to happen. 34-13. to 13. We got trashed. I want to see what Baker Mayfield did to us because I'm actually curious. So 34-13. to 13, 507 yards gained by them. 333 yards. Actually, Baker Mayfield didn't play all that well. He threw two interceptions. That's not that good. Nick Chubb just went off. Duke Johnson also played very well. But Nick Chubb 11 for 131 and three touchdowns. Okay. The Dolphins made it to the Super Bowl. Alright, they're taking on the Rams. Let's see. Who's going to win? Money's on the Rams. They are going to win 24-17. Is there anybody else I want back on the team here? Mark Ingram, Tim Williams, don't really want either of those guys. Tyus Bowser, I don't really want. Uh, Justice Hill, again, I don't really want. All right, so I'm not going to let anybody here, you know, I'm not going to um, have anybody here come back to the team. Mark Ingram's down to a 76. That is not very good. So let's advance the week. Who is going to be available in free agency? I would really like a linebacker. Honestly, outside linebacker or inside linebacker right now. Christian McCaffrey, of course, is at the top. Joe Mixon is here. That's cool. I'm not going to go after him, but... Quinnen Williams. Why is Quinnen Williams here? Uh, Jason Kelsey is also here. Justin Houston. He could play outside linebacker if I needed him to. Trent Williams is here. Jaquiski Tart, Demonte Kazee, Aaron Jones. A lot of... Really talented players. I kind of figured this would happen, but let's just see who we can bring in. I went after one player and one player only, so let's see if we got him. We did get him. Justin Houston is now on the team. Currently a right end, but he's going to move up to right outside linebacker. He might go down in overall, but I don't really care. He's going to be a pretty big upgrade over Jalen Ferguson. 
I think this is okay. Ferguson isn't progressing as well as I would have liked, you know. But, uh, you know, Justin Houston should be a nice outside linebacker. What's his overall up here? 87. I'm fine with it. He's an 8 overall, you know, advantage over Jalen Ferguson. We are now in the draft. This is filled with a bunch of randomly generated players. No one here is real. I don't want to look for a 2022 draft class. We have the 22nd overall pick, and there's a really sweet safety in this class. There's no chance I'll get him. He's supposed to go mid-first round. Just going to check to make sure. He is gone, but I will definitely highlight that guy. He was like 220 or something. I feel like he could have played, you know, uh, linebacker if I needed him to. But here, are there any good linebackers? This is the best linebacker I could find. I really need a linebacker on this team, but you're so slow. I don't want you coming in to play middle. There's also this guy, Dixon Crawford. He's the fastest middle linebacker, so he may be able to play middle for us, but... Man, there's like no one here who I want that badly. So I'm just going to go with this outside linebacker. If you can randomly have like 80 speed, I know you won't, but who knows? Actually, what is your combine all about? You're even slower. Okay, let's go with this guy. He's an 80 overall. Normal development. 76 speed. I don't think you can play middle. The 70 zone coverage isn't actually that bad. 70 man coverage as well. You, you have the stats for it other than speed. I'll have to see what he goes down to. If he's like a 79, I might give him a try. I'm also going to go with this other middle linebacker. I want to see what this dude's all about. If he can be like a 77, 78, I may even start that guy. But uh, this new dude, I mean. There's still a quarterback here. That doesn't look that bad. All right, well, anyway. Is this middle linebacker available? He is Dixon Crawford. He's a 72. Okay. 83 speed. That's the fastest middle linebacker in this class. 84 zone coverage, though. Man. This is a really bad linebacker class. I just have gotten pretty unlucky. I know I, I was in a position to draft a linebacker the year I drafted Stanford Samuels, but I just really wanted to use Stanford Samuels. I think I'll show one last pick here. There's a 77 overall wide receiver. Not too bad. Uh, but with this last pick I'll show here, it'll probably be a left tackle. Uh, so I think this guy's actually going to be better than Alan Ramsey. Nigel Sparks. Welcome to the team. 74. Not a bad you know left tackle to get late in the draft. But now I'm just going to send him to the end of the draft. And I'll let you know what the draft class is all about. All right, so let's see who the computer snagged for me after uh, the third round. Is that when the last pick was? Yeah, okay. So we got a 72 overall middle linebacker. Threw this guy on my draft board, too. He didn't look that good. And then no one else later, you know, who was of note. But let's check out the NFL. Who went first overall? Uh, Rayshon Williams. Pretty nice-looking wide receiver. This corner was disgusting. But this guy, I knew this dude was going to be, like, the best player in the class. He looked so good. 92 strength, 88 block shedding, 83 power moves, 84 tackling, 88 pursuit, 81 hit power. Yeah, that guy is a stud. All right, well, this cornerback looked very good. Let me just check him out a little bit more in depth. Star dev on him, 87 press, 97 speed and acceleration. I'm sure that right end is the top player in the class. There is an 83 running back with superstar development. Six foot three, he's a power back. Oh my god, 90 speed, 87 trucking, 92 carrying, 91 stiff arm. This was one of the best running backs I have ever seen. Oh my god, that guy is unbelievable. There's that corner, there's another right end. A left outside linebacker, this is the dude we grabbed. Okay, so I don't have to actually look at him anymore. Drops off to an, uh, like below an 80 pretty soon after, but these top two guys make this class very good. The team for the final season is an 88 overall. Hopefully we can get over a 90, you know, with the experience points and stuff throughout the season. Uh, but Lamar Jackson's up to an 87 overall. He's progressed, you know, sort of well. He still has ridiculous speed, 95 speed on him. Cam Akers is an 88. I picked up Ty Montgomery in free agency just to get a solid backup running back. Uh, Marquise Brown, LaVishka Chenault, Willie Sneed, still a very nice wide receiver core. The offensive line is looking good. Mark Andrews is still talented over there. And then defensively, this Weiss dude is actually a lower overall than both of our middle linebackers. I just could not find a good middle linebacker like this entire time, so it's my bad. Uh, Patrick Onmerso actually, you know, won defensive rookie or defensive player of the year one of these seasons, so you know maybe he can do that again. Justin Houston joins the team now at right outside linebacker. He's not too bad. The secondary is still good. Defensive line is still good. I'm perfectly okay with this team. I think they have a lot of potential. Here's what specialist looks like. Probably pretty expected from you know, the past few seasons at least. I'm going to go straight to the end of the season. I will see you there. We made the playoffs this final season. That is very nice to see. The Chargers went 7-9 and nine and also made the playoffs somehow. Let's view these weekly awards. We got a winner. It's going to be Marlon Humphrey. He got an interception, 8 total tackles. Not bad at all. Carson Wentz is also on the Buccaneers. 
That looks sort of funny. But let's check out stats. Lamar Jackson won MVP. 4,308 yards. 44 touchdowns. 5 interceptions. Wow. Yeah, okay. Very much an MVP kind of season. My god. Cam Akers was okay. Almost 4 yards per carry. Only 5 touchdowns. 1,100 yards almost. So not too bad, but Lamar Jackson carried this offense. Marquise Brown. 92 catches. 1,344 yards, 19 touchdowns. Good God. Mark Andrews, 90 catches, 961 yards, 7 touchdowns. LaVishka Chenault, 5 touchdowns. Willie Sneed gets 4, but 19 by Marquise Brown. He almost had like half of Lamar Jackson's passing touchdowns this year. Jesus. 12 sacks lit up from Ronnie Stanley, but that's not great. Honestly, I, I it's so difficult to like kind of tell these numbers because he probably still like made the Pro Bowl. I don't really know what's up, but pretty good performance from the offensive line this entire rebuild so far. 88 total tackles from Marlon Humphrey with four picks. Very nice season. 12 tackles for loss for Griffin Wood. Solid season for him too. Michael Pierce gets 12. Uh, 13 sacks from Justin Houston. He was a really good acquisition. Eight and a half from Matthew Judon. We have four interceptions. We already saw that from Marlon Humphrey. One from Justin Houston, Matthew Judon, Tavon Young, and Josiah Scott. All right. Well, anyway, defensive touchdowns. We don't have any. I don't think we had one this entire time. No safeties, and one blocked kick. Derek French. So 12th on offense. Defense maybe top 10. Seemed to be pretty good. We were fifth. Okay, yeah. Defense was very good. There we go. Lamar Jackson, MVP. I will take it. Nobody else from our team here though. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson. Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Jack wins that one. Justin Houston at number six though. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Corey Bush. Related to Devin Bush. Who knows. Uh, Tevin Shade, whoever that is, comes in at number three. Grant Peterson comes in at number six. All right. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year, Sean Grimes wins that one. Tucker Weiss at number three. Dixon Crawford at number four. DeMichael Armstrong. Really weird way to spell DeMichael at number six. Best quarterback is Lamar Jackson. Best running back is Nick Chubb. But Cam Akers at number six, not all that bad. DeAndre Swift is a 92. That's why I kind of wanted him on this team. He develops so well. Best wide receiver is Marquise Brown, hands down. Best offensive lineman, Joel Batonio. Ronnie Stanley, he's the third best offensive lineman, even though he let up, what, 12 sacks? I don't really know. Joe Tooney at number six. Best defensive lineman, Chris Jones actually wins that one. Nobody from our team here. Best linebacker, Darius Leonard's at 99. Justin Houston at number two, though. Pretty cool. Matthew Judon at number 10. Best defensive back, Tredavious White. Marlon Humphrey, though, at number four. Best kicker, Harrison Butker. Where is Justin Tucker at number six? I say this all the time, but I strongly believe that Justin Tucker should be a 99 in this game. It's annoying that kicker is like the highest overall kicker is like an 88. I think it is Justin Tucker. That's just dumb. I think they should like each position should weight different stats differently. You know, like kick power and kick accuracy should be so heavily weighted with these kickers that if they have 99 kick power, they should be automatically in the 90s. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I don't think awareness should matter all that much for these positions. That's just a really random rant, but Lamar Jackson, six experience points, four for Marquise Brown, three for Lavishka Chenault, not bad at all. Defensively, three for Wood, three for Stan Stanford Samuels, two for Marlon Humphrey. All right, the team should progress very well once again. Okay, the team is up to an 89 overall. Let's check out these stats on Lamar Jackson. 96 throw power, 96 acceleration, 95 speed and agility. Ridiculous stats from him. I'm just really curious. What is he as a running back? Lamar Jackson is an 88 overall running back? <laughs> wow. He has ridiculous stats for being a running back, though. 72 carrying, uh, if that was up, you know, he'd be a very, very good running back, but that's just so funny. All right, let's move him back to quarterback. The rest of the team I will go over shortly after. I think Marquise Brown's up to like a 97 with confidence or something stupid like that. I want to check out his stats as well. It's cool to look at these wide receivers after a little while. Their stats become ridiculous. He is superstar dev, 97 speed, 99 catching, 99 short route running. Just absurd. LaVishka Chenault's an 87. He probably has like almost 99 catching though. 94 catching for him, 94 short route running as well. He'd be a really good slot wide receiver if I moved him down there. The team is really nice. Don't really think that has to be said. Uh, the defense is... Okay, hold on. Where are the linebackers for this team? Did they get cut? What? What happened to the linebackers? So Kenny Young made his way to the Packers. Somehow, I guess he got cut. And then Patrick Onwaso is nowhere to be found, at least on any team. 
I can check free agency because Alec Ogletree is the only player with O as our last name, a middle linebacker. So Onwaso is actually not in free agency, I don't think. Okay, yeah, Blake Cashman, the top middle linebacker. Okay, well, I, I don't have a, I don't have a good middle linebacker. I have no idea what happened. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, let's move this Jackson guy to middle linebacker. I guess why not? I, I don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure this happened a little while ago when I used to do those like all college team videos. If you'd have like a bunch of players at the same position, the computer would just go in and cut them. So I guess Patrick Onwaso just got cut out of existence. Snapped out of existence, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> let's check out the overall difference. Please let me know if you know what happened. If it's not what I just said, then let me know, I guess. 89 overall compared to their 88s. It sucks that we don't have our number one middle linebacker anymore. I wonder when he got cut. Let's advance the week. Did we win? We did win. Okay, we have to take on the Browns now, 35-17. to 17. I also don't think I shut off the schedule. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'll try to do it after I send by here. 92 overall for them, though. I'll make sure to do that. I don't know if I did. I'll just make sure to do it. And if I already did, I'll just, you know, cut it out. All that good stuff. But let's advance the week. Can we take down the Browns? We cannot. All right. We're going to lose this rebuild here. 31 to 13 against the Browns there. But let me just go and check out uh, the team schedule for the regular season. Just in case I forgot. 3-1 and one in the preseason. Won the opening four games. Lost to the Chiefs. Won a whole bunch more in a row. Lost two more then. Uh, beat the Texans. Got shut out by the Steelers. And then beat the Bears. Now we can go into the postseason, and we won 35 to 17 against the Chargers, and then lost 31 to 13 against the Browns. That's rough, but it's okay. We made the playoffs three seasons. I feel like the one year we didn't was kind of fluky, but it's all good. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I hope you Ravens fans enjoyed this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it in general, but I usually like to give a shout out to the, the fans of the team I'm doing. Hopefully you guys aren't too upset with some of the moves I make. Um, but anyway, if you guys ended up enjoying this video, feel free to leave a like on it. They definitely help me out in the end. I love when these videos get to like 100 likes. It's just so cool to see and like 4,000 views or something like that. It's just awesome. Hopefully when Madden 20 comes out, my rebuilds can just start out with a boom at the beginning of the year. That's how it happened this year. I might have 19. My most viewed video, I think, is a rebuild from earlier this year. It's just cool to see that you guys actually enjoy watching these videos. Um, also, feel free to leave some comments. I love to respond to comments. So I try to respond to as many as possible. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.